Um, but one of those little games I play with uh, the boy is, uh, uh, did I say I've just been swimming? Yeah, I have. That's why my hair's crap. <laughs> you know, why did you have a shave? <laughs> I'm just having that time. But one of those games I play with the boy is, um, who are you, son? And, uh, what do you believe in? This is when I'm being a redneck. And, um, and he goes, ah, oh, jeez, I can't do it exactly like he does it, the boy. Um, but he goes, I'm a Catholic. <laughs> sort of aggressive almost, you know, or challenging, you know, I'm a Catholic. Nah, he says, I'm a Catholic. I said, yeah, but what do you believe in? He says, I believe in my family. I believe in my country, the flag. And I believe in my Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. I told him to say that one. I got it off a movie at some stage. I don't know how it was said in the movie. But um, I like that one because rednecks are funny. I like rednecks, you know, they're fantastic. I believe in Jesus. What sort of Jesus is that, you know? Who is that Jesus? There's a lot of Jesuses around. Two men say they're Jesus. One of them must be wrong. Ah, there's a protest singer. He's singing a protest song. Yeah. But ah, no, there's lots of Jesus. And none of them have to be wrong, actually. Yeah. Don't call Mark Knopfler. You know, he won't believe you. But, um, yeah, that Jesus, he's one of my favorites. Redneck Jesus. Um, is he less? All right, now here is what this um, episode's about all of a sudden. Is that Jesus illegitimate? Oh, well, I think not. Yeah. He's a little bit racist. Yeah. Uh, he looks Scandinavian. Yeah. Um, never saw anyone from the Middle East with that beard. You know, and the nice long, sort of flowing hair, uh, like some Norse god um, from Valhalla. You know that sort of Jesus. You know that Jesus that looks like uh, a Viking. Um, that's a real Jesus. Uh, yeah, but a, you know, a bloke from the Middle East wouldn't look like that. <laughs> what? That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about reality here. We're not talking about fact. You know, we're talking about truth here. We're not talk talking about what some Middle Eastern guy might have looked like or might not have looked like way back when. We're talking about this Jesus, and this Jesus is real. Hmm. He's redneck Jesus. You know, if you don't come from Texas, and if you don't believe in your flag, and I'm talking about the American flag, the American flag. No, I'm talking about the American flag. <laughs> If you don't believe in that flag, if you don't believe in your country, if you don't believe in your family, and if you don't believe in your guns, um, then um, you're not one of us. Uh, I believe in Jesus Christ, uh, my Lord and Saviour. Because um, I come from Texas. Now that's a very real Jesus. Um, but there are other types of Jesus is out there. Um, there's original Jesus. Well, nobody knows about him, as far as I can tell. Um, but then there's um, now. I was talking to my goddaughter this morning, and she was, you know, she was investigating or thinking about, you know, one type of Jesus, the Jesus that uh, was written up in the gospel. The original Jesus of the Gospels, written by whoever wrote those. Okay, now that's a slightly legendary Jesus too. Not to be disrespected, that's a, a very legitimate Jesus. That probably bears, I think, I bet that bears some resemblance to the original Jesus who is lost in time and history uh, because whoever wrote the Gospels didn't get it exactly right. Um, uh, you know, because the Gospels, they've got these conversations that happened when Jesus was a kid. Uh, yeah, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, or whoever was pretending to be Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, they weren't there to 
hear that conversation. You know, Jesus, a little kid. Um, you know, Mary thought he was with Joseph, and Joseph thought Jesus was with, was with Mary, and they basically lost the kid. Uh, but when they finally found him, and, uh, oh, God, where are you? <laughs> he was in the temple, um, wowing uh, the intelligentsia of the Jewish hierarchy, you know, the wowing the rabbis. And, um, and they said, you know, oh, said Mary, why'd you go running off? I was worried about you. And a little smart ass, you know, he goes, um, why would you worry about me? I'm God. You, you should know where I would be. I'm not going to be at the chariot races, am I? Why didn't you come straight to the temple? You idiot, mum. <laughs> now, um, <laughs> uh, where, uh, that story, is that in Matthew, Mark, Luke or John, or two of them, or three of them, or all of them? I don't know. I can't remember. But, um, the Gospels, according to whoever it was of that little interaction, well, that wasn't Gospel. They weren't there. They don't know what was said. You know, Mary, I guess they could have uh, spoke to someone who spoke to someone else who knew Mary. And Mary might have told them what happened, but it's not going to be accurate, is it? So it's not a Gospel. It's not a Gospel. It's a probably a fourth-hand account at best, maybe fifth. Okay, but they call it a gospel. Hmm. And, um, and, well, it's probably not one word that God ever uttered. Oh, sorry, not God, Jesus, the other God. Um, it's like one big happy family, you know, like back in ancient Greece, isn't it, when you got to, when you start, you know, getting a, um, supernatural being, getting it on, with a, a human, yeah, because that's God and Mary uh, impregnating Mary somehow via Gideon or something, and then having a baby that's half God, half man, all that sort of stuff. That ooh, that starts to sound like we're getting the family back together. Yeah, um, this is getting away from the one God thing. No matter how much you try and spin it into a Trinity, that's getting back to the multiple God thing, isn't it? It's just getting the family back together, the family of gods. You know, it's not so far off um, Zeus having a baby out of his head and calling it Athena or something or whatever. You know? And then um, um, all those gods back in Greece that mated with humans and had an Achilles or <laughs> Yeah, we're getting back to that. Slowly. We haven't gone past just three people in the family yet. Um, God, the Father, and um, and Mary, the human mother, God, the Godfather, and Mary, the human mother, and this baby that's a bit of both, like some ancient Greek godly family, part God family, and all that sort of stuff. But the thing about that Jesus that was spoken about in the original Gospels, which are Gospels, you know, in the... Um, in, 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 with respect to the way we tend to use the word gospel, you know, this is the gospel truth, you know. We know it's not the gospel uh, because I think there was, yeah, you know, we've got in the gospels a first hand account of Jesus being born. Um, <laughs> and this is miles before Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. How did they know what was said that day? All right, and um, we've got a we've got a blow by blow description of Jesus getting tried in court before Pontius Pilate. Uh, was Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the gallery listening so they could get this all down? Yeah. Hey, speak a bit slower. Speak a bit slower, Pilate. Jesus, we're trying to get this down, even though we're illiterate. <laughs> and even if. Even if, even if um, they had exceptional good memories, because people did have good memories back in those days, uh, I, I hear, um, and, and passed it down oral history style and all that. They weren't even there in court, were they? 
did Pontius Pilate say, listen, Jesus, come in, stand before me, all that sort of stuff. Um, and I want you to um, explain yourself. All right. But bring your disciples, bring, bring your disciples, uh, because we want, I want them there. You know, I want them to be your Hansard, so to speak, and get it all down. He didn't do that. Even in the Bible, it says he didn't do that. All right, so the Gospels aren't the Gospels. Because this whole discussion between, I don't know why I suddenly sound Scottish, but there's this whole discussion between Jesus and Pontius Pilate that went on. Um, who passed that on to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John if they existed? You know, if Jesus existed. Um, but who passed that on to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Who, you know, so did they get that? Did Jesus come back to the apostles and say, now listen, get this down. You've got no idea how this went down. You know, I'll give you a word for word what Pilate said and word for word what I said, um, so that you've got it all down, so that you can put it down for posterity and um, so on and so forth. Oh, but you can't put it down because you're illiterate, aren't you? So put it in your head and then pass that down to some people who can write and who are willing to say that they are you, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, all that sort of stuff. And anyway, one way or another, you end up with some Gospels that is an account of a Jesus. And uh, that one's not redneck Jesus. That one's not redneck Jesus. That's, um, I reckon that's original Jesus. No, that's original Jesus but one. All right, so we've got redneck Jesus over in Texas and we've got original Jesus but one. Now, there's, you know, and um, there's so many Jesus since. We've had so many Jesus since. Because as soon as you start, you know, the first guys, uh, apparently they put the Gospels down in Aramaic. The first, you know, the people who wrote the Gospels, the first people who wrote the Gospels down, you know, who weren't Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. I think someone said to me once that, mm, handwriting experts, you know, that who was it? Luke and John, they sound like they're the same writer. You know, so there might be only three gospel writers, you know. Um, there was someone called Robert um, who was actually writing as if he was Luke and John. And there was another guy whose name was Herbert. And, uh, you know, he was writing down. He was saying, I am Matthew and here's my gospel. A little fib, but it's, a, you know, it's okay. And, um, and there was another person called Jane. And she was the other guy. Paul? No. <laughs> Matthew? Who do I think? Mark? Mark! Jane was Mark. All right. But then there comes a time when the Gospels get translated into Greek. You know, first translation. And obviously things are going to go haywire there. Because even translating from one language to another is one issue. You know, you've got a different Jesus straight away. Um, but also when you, you know, when you're translating from the Aramaic into the Greek for a different audience, um, some stuff is not going to translate well. And I don't only mean words. Some words aren't going to translate well. We know that. All right. So it's not going to have the same meaning. So as soon as it hasn't got the same meaning, you haven't got the same, you haven't got the same Jesus, we've got a new Jesus. But also... There's a, the truth behind the words. If you did do a very, very good translation into the Greek from the Aramaic, if you did a, the best possible translation, it could well damage the truth behind the words. So what do you want? Do you want a good translation of the words and the meanings of the words, or do you want a good translation of the truth? Do you want the truth to translate across? Or do you want the words to translate across? The meaning of the words to translate across? Or the, mean, or the truths behind the words to translate across? Sometimes you'll change the meaning of the words just to get the... Um, because you might decide it's more important to get the truth of the truth across. Um, I think someone said to me once um, that, you know, that saying, you know, it's um, harder uh, for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to go into heaven. All right. Now, someone told me once that in the ancient Hebrew or whatever it is, um, that that might have been translated well, uh, badly, um, that whatever the word for camel 
back then. Maybe it was K A K M L L, no vowels or something, you know, back in those days. But whatever that word, uh, someone told me that word could equally me well mean that could mean that word. Um, oh, I've got to go. Um, rope, thick rope that you tie your boats up with. Yeah, and it could mean it's harder to get a rope, a thick rope through the eye of a needle than it is to get a rich, for a rich man to get you to heaven. That would make a lot more sense. Um, but you know, but would you switch it back? If you found out that was the case, would you switch it back? Probably you wouldn't. Gotta go, because my ride, no, I mean the person I'm giving a lift to is coming. Um, you probably wouldn't. You'd probably stick with the camel because that's much more vibrant an image, you know? really tells the story better. So even though the translation was wrong, you go with the wrong translation because it tells the story better. The image of a camel going through an eye of a needle is great. The image of a rope trying to be forced through the eye of a needle, yeah, all right, that tells the same truth, but not in, a, not in as vibrant a way. I'd go with the camel. Trying to get through the eye of a needle, you know, bumping into the head of the needle. That's fantastic. It's absurd, but good absurd. You know, tell a kid, you know, it's harder to get a rope through the eye of a needle than a rich man into heaven. And the kids, oh, what a boring parable. Ah, but say, try and get a camel through there. Oh, I like that, says the kid. The kids say, I like that story. That'll stick in my mind. So which one's more important? Go with the wrong translation. Now, people who do translations have to think about that stuff, I think. You know? So, um, you know, people say, oh, it was translated wrong. Yeah, it was translated wrong, but it was translated right. You know, you had to pick which truth you wanted. And people say, oh, the Jesus you've got in Greek is not the right Jesus. The other one was right. Well, I'm not sure, I'm not sure even that one. They're two different Jesuses. That one was, right for that culture and this one is right for that culture and we're not even sure that one was right anyway but all right okay that was more original than that one but this one might be better you know? uh, redneck jesus might be the best jesus of all the point is we've got hundreds of jesuses out there hundreds of jesuses thousands i bet and there's a, surely there's a, I'm, I'm sure there is there's a chinese jesus there might be a pacific island jesus you know and instead of jesus going out in the desert for 40 days and having a good old sock, you know, oh, you know, don't go, look, this is like awful. Um, why would you do that? The core, the truth of the matter is, he was all alone out there in the desert. Well, Pacific Islander, you know, translate the Bible across there, don't talk about deserts. Have Jesus go climbing to the top of a volcano, the only volcanic, um, mountain on that island so you know that's his moment of 40 days out in the wilderness and all that sort of stuff oh yeah but that's not you know accurate it's not about the truth beneath the accuracy is what matters put him up on top of a hill on top of a volcanic mountain sitting up there talking to God and going down to hell whatever he wants to do you know with his spare time don't put him out in a desert with the camels. Put him up on top of a volcanic mountain um, with a bird of paradise sitting there with him and going through all his anguish there and having a good old think up there for 40 days and 40 nights. Is that Jesus illegitimate? No. Even make him look a bit Pacific Islander. Nothing wrong with that. He you know, it's like... Um, I've seen the Thai Buddha. You know the Buddha, the, the Thai, you know, Thai Buddha. Not Thai Buddha, but Thai, T-H-A-I. That Buddha, you know, he's got that curly hair and he's not so fat and all that sort of stuff. Very legitimate Buddha. Not the same as the Indian Buddha, the big fat one with the big smiley face and what's got a bowl in his hand and something else in the other hand, a couple of sticks, I don't know what it is. Um, yeah, but they're two different Buddhas, but which one's more legitimate? Oh, that one is because that's the original. Yeah, but that one is too. And that, uh, you know, and I think that's, as it is with Jesus. Ah, people say, oh, what's the real one? What's the correct one? What's the orthodox one? You know, what's the one true faith? What's the one true orthodox idea of Jesus? 
they're all correct if they work. Yeah, respect.